Yeah, I started. Like yeah. So once you install that, oh, hold on. Oh, please, can you please give me control? Nothing to rush. Okay, please. Uh, uh, yeah, I got the control. So once you download this Loader 2021 version, right? So this is the latest version of Loader. Uh, okay. So Loader 2021 Community Edition. Community Edition means trial version, guys. Okay. So uh, for the same license, you can apply for the same Community Edition trial version. You can, if you apply the license key, that becomes a trial uh, license version. Okay. So now once you once you download this, right? So basically, I have shown you like. Uh, if you want to download load runner from the micro focus site, you need an official email ID or a student email address, student email address, right? So if not, I will share the, if you don't have a student, I mean, when I say student email address, you know, your university email address or college email address. If you have that, you can use that. Otherwise, uh, you, you have to use an official email address, right? So if you don't have official email address or uh, this, you know, student email address, I will share, I shared the, my Google drive. I have downloaded it and shared my Google drive. And, uh, you know, uh, in that way, like few people have this already, right? So once you download this, right? So see, observe here, the size will be one and a half GB approximately. See that, right? 1.45 GB is the total size of this file. So why? Because like, uh, if you install this, three components will be installed actually. VUGen, controller, analysis, three components will be installed right and make sure that you know like be, make sure that you have enough free free space in the drive right in the drive in which you are installing suppose if you see here uh, c drive has 34 gb e drive 104 gb f drive and so on right let me check what is the ram also the first time you open task manager you see like this uh, pritish can you please click on more details Is this a new laptop or a desktop? This one is this a desktop or a laptop? No, I think you are on mute. Okay, use an alt A, alt A to unmute. Alt A, yeah. Can you hear me? It is desktop, yeah. yeah. This is desktop only, yeah. yeah desktop, okay. So, can you okay? Can you go to performance tab, please, in task manager? Yes. So this is a Pentium processor. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure whether you know Pentium processor will be supported or not because I haven't come across any Pentium processor. So <laughs> let's see. And memory is 6 GB. So let's see that. Okay. So yeah, you can close this British. Go close this task manager and continue with the installation. Yeah. So in E drive, you have 104 GB. Yeah, you can proceed here. Yes. So once you download that, right, yeah. So click double click on that to launch the installer. Yeah, click next. Here you can see Microsoft Vivo, Micro Focus, sorry, Micro Focus Loader 2021 Community Edition. Right? Now community edition means trial version. Yes, yeah. Click on next. But to this, I'm not sure whether you know like a Pentium processor you know, uh, supports this or not. I'm not sure. Let's see. We'll get to know because still now I haven't come across any Pentium processors. Mostly I see i3 or i5. Is anyone else installing guys? Yeah, I have installed. You already installed it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Now let me uh, pass. Yeah. So let me explain what is this. So the it is it's saying that the following prerequisites must be installed before you can install load runner. Right. The following prerequisites must be must all be installed before you can install micro focus load runner. So what does it require? It is showing here. See verify. So um, installing network virtualization request desired in the Windows Smart Screen. Verifying that all the required. Microsoft Windows updates are installed in the OS, right? 
so yeah uh, so uh, those who did not start installation right so first to do windows update updates if you haven't you know if you turned off windows updates turn, turn them back turn windows update on and do all the windows updates and then proceed with this right now you know here it is showing only microsoft visual c++ 2015 distributor click ok so that what it will do it will first install or it will first install all this click ok see you can see read it here click ok to begin installing these programs now yeah now it will install the required uh, you know required software load runner is now installing the required software clear guys Right now you can see here it is computing space requirements. Yeah, click next. So hold on, hold on, please. One second. So observe here. You know, select the products you want to install and click next to continue. So by default, load runner will be selected. Go with the default option and click next. Yeah. Yes. Now in this window, accept the terms and conditions. Yeah, the terms in the license agreement and click next. That's mandatory. Right, and now it will be installed in by default, it will be installed in C drive, C program files x86. Okay, so click next. So you have 34 GB in C drive, that's that's enough. Yeah, click install now. I already shared a video on this case, like from the previous batch. So how to install load runner and how to install Java and uh, how to set up JMeter. Okay. So for JMeter, there is nothing like installation. So you need to start JMeter by using a batch file. So that's not an actual installation. Okay. So we will start JMeter by using batch file. So good thing with JMeter is you need not have admin rights on your machine. You can install JMeter on your office machine or uh, generally in most of the office machines like they don't provide admin privileges, right? Guys are able to follow me. So you can install JMeter on the, I mean, sorry, you can set up JMeter on office machine also because that doesn't require any admin rights, admin rights on the machine. Yes, I mean, is it clear, guys? Yes, sir. Please go through the video link that I shared. Please, you know, that is my previous session recording. I shared one video, I think, yesterday on how to install Load Runner and uh, how to install Java and JMeter setup. Okay, Pritish, it's going faster only, Pritish, 320 hmm? It's saying Thank that you. gold is... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's saying that gold is gold. <laughs> Maybe at that time it was a latest processor when you buy, bought this lap and desktop. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Anyways, free. Yeah, now it is registering some component objects. Let it complete. There are 259 count objects so that it should register as you can see here. It will take some time. I will pass record. Yes. So this is the only step that you need to do some, you know, uh, all other steps are clicking next, next, next button. So this is the only step that there will be some deviation. So here you have to uncheck the certificate, the first checkbox. Uncheck that and click next. That's it. Yes, now click finish. No need of installation, lock. no need, click finish. Now, what is it saying? Do you want to open the file? What file actually? It is showing, uh, you know, readme file. It will open readme file. Yeah, click OK and it will open a readme file. I resume recording, right? Yes. Now see here, this is readme file for uh, Loadrunner Professional, okay? 
Can you please give me control, Ritesh? I just want to, yeah, yes. So this is load on a readme file. So what does that mean? Readme file means, so this document helps you, explains you what are the, what is new in this version, right? And what are the system and, uh, you know, protocol requirements, right? And installation guide, this link protects you to the load on a professional installation guide and known issues and so on, if there are any known issues and so on. And also it will tell you like what, what are in, in this first link, right? What is new? So it, it explains, it covers like what are the list of new features and enhancements for this version, right? You can bookmark this, British. you can add bookmark this. So we may need this, uh, we may need this in, you know, you can bookmark that, yeah. Resume recording. Yeah, for the recording purpose, let me repeat it, guys. So when you install load runner, you get these three components, the virtual user generator, controller, and analysis. The first component we will be using is virtual user generator. In short, that is called as VUGen, right? VUGen, virtual user generator. So, and this is this component is useful, useful for scripting, right? Your script development and debugging. So this we use this virtual user generator. And for test executions, we use this controller component. And to analyze the test results, we use this analysis component. So this, this is briefly about these three components. Yes. Hey, sorry guys, I'm sorry guys, I'm speaking on you. Uh, so, uh, in the last to last session, I explained like how to record a script with VUGEN. So, is anyone else facing any issue, guys, in installation? Can I take your silence as no? Okay. So now click on file, Pritish. Uh, yeah, new file and solution. Right. Let me explain the UI first. Case. So this is called as menu bar. From the menu bar, like uh, this is called as menu bar folder. Let me try it. Let me hide it. Okay. So this is called as menu bar. As I explained in CJ Met also explained this. This is called as menu bar. And in file, you have some options to uh, for new script and solution. This is to open an existing script, right? This is to add files to this uh, load runner. So you, you have a couple of options over here, isn't it? So if you click on add, add new script to add new script or an existing script, right? So you have this add option, right? And uh, close the document, this is to close. So we'll see this one by one. So first you have to go to new script and solution. If you want to record a script, you have to go to new script and solution. And uh, by default, single protocol will be selected. Observe here, by default, single protocol will be selected. And you know, these are the different protocols supported by Loadrunner. So Loadrunner, as I mentioned in the previous sessions, it's a you know very uh, matured and evolved tool. Uh, it's almost like uh, developed like 22 years back, right? So it was developed by uh, and, uh, a company called Mercury actually. Rodan was developed by an organization or a, uh, you know, a, a product based company called Mercury. Right. So in 1999, Please give me a moment as I am sharing, I am opening that load on the PPT.
Yeah. So you, you can see my screen, right? So Lodner is a performance testing tool which was pioneered by Mercury in 1999. Right? Pioneered means this was first, you know, or developed or you know, this is the first performance testing tool that was invented in the market, guys. And it was uh, developed by a company called Mercury. Initially, it was called as Mercury Loadener, and then in 2006, HP Enterprise bought that from Mercury. Uh, at that time, it was called as HP Loadener, and in 2016, Loadener was acquired by a, by Microfocus. Currently, Microfocus is owning this Loadener, right? So the reason why I am explaining this is some people ask like, you know, is Mer HP Loadener and Mercury Loadener different? No, all these are one and the same. There is only one Loadener tool, but why it has different names is in it, it, Mercury is the company that it invented this or it, no, you know, or developed this perform performance testing tool Loadener in 1999. Later on, HP Enterprise bought that in 2006. At that time, it was called as HP Loadener. From 2006 to 2016, it was owned by HP Enterprise. And in 2016, Loadener was acquired by Microfocus. So right now, Microfocus, it's called as Microfocus Loadener. Clear, guys? Yes, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, yes, and Loadener, yes, sir. Supports, uh, Loadener supports various development tools, technologies, and communication protocols. It supports various development tools, technologies, and communication protocols. This is the only tool in the market that supports such large number of protocols to conduct performance testing. Right? Now let me launch Loadener on my machine. This is called a splash screen. S-P-L-A-S-H, -S splash screen. And splash screen shows you the version, version of this particular tool. And right? here you can see version 2021. And, and you know, remember, from 2020 onwards, they are uh, naming the versions with the year, right? Previously, it used to be Loadener 8, Loadener 9. Uh, I work from Loadener 8, right? So Loadener 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12.1, 12.2, 12.3, and so on. Uh, the my minor releases, they used to name it as dot one, dot two, dot three. Okay. Why I'm explaining this? There is a reason, guys. Okay. So those who want to claim experience, right? So they will ask you which version of Loadener you start, you you are working now, right? Or what is the Loadener version you worked previously in your first project, right? So previously the version numbers will used to be like this: Loadener seven, and you know seven dot one, seven dot two, seven dot three, and so on. Those are minor versions, and then Loadener eight, and then Loadener nine, and then Loadener ten, eleven, right? Then eleven till and minor versions these are major versions guys and minor versions used to be something like this 12.1 and 12.2 understood guys 12.3 and later on we have 12.5 they did not release 12.4 i believe unless they might have released i'm not sure but you know it used to be like this 12.5 12.6 and so on right from 2020 onwards they are naming it as load under 20 2020 right from year 2020 onwards Right, uh, Loadener 2020 version was released in Feb, Feb 2020. So from then they started naming like this. They started using the year as the you know version. Now the latest version is 2021. Right, here is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They may ask you like you know in, in your project in your CV you keep some three to four projects, right? So then I ask you to your first project and which version of Loadener you used here. Don't say 13 or Loadener 13 or Loadener 14. There are no versions of 13 or 14. Previously, they used to be like this, like 10, you can say like I worked from 12.1 or from 12 version. You can say that I worked from 12.x. Generalize that and say that, you know, you can say Loadener 12.x. Okay. 12.x means 12 is the major version and x is the minor version. 12.1, 12.2, 12.3 and so on. Here it is. Now, so once you launch Loadener, right? So this is the UI. And uh, let me show you, go to file and new script and solution. Let me show you what all protocols that Loadener support, supports. So if you observe here, so in each in each line you have, or in each column, you have eight protocols. Observe here, these are different protocols supported by Loadener. Now, what is meant by a protocol? Let's understand what is meant by a protocol, right? So protocol is the language of communication between your browser and server. 
right to uh, to give a simple definition of protocol protocol is the communication language between your browser and server okay i covered it in this performance testing introduction slide let me show you that. we'll go we'll go back to performance testing you know basic concepts from tomorrow guys okay as i can't speak much today i started with installation understood guys yes 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 sir okay i have to clear some my gmail is full i have to clear some i have to make some free space that's why i'm unable to you know move over to it and you got it right what is pro what is a protocol means here in here protocol means communication language between your browser and server and these are the different protocols supported by uh, load runner so in each column you have four protocol uh, sorry eight protocols right and in that way you have four full you know four full rows or full columns and then one more here so 33 right it supports is it i'm sorry sorry 1 2 3 4 yeah for 32 plus 133 protocols it supports 33 protocols right and that's about this and let me explain these things uh, once you select the protocol right so based on whatever protocol you select it will show some name by default i think i covered this already in the previous session based on whatever protocol you select here it will give show some default name suppose i, I selected web http html protocol that's why you are seeing the script name as web http html1 if you select web services right observe here it shows the script name as default name as web services1 you can change it as per your requirement okay you can change it as per you, you can give your own name you can give some meaningful name and the next field shows you like uh, default path for this uh, default path of load runner scripts and uh, eh? by default it will be in c drive documents we use on scripts default path here guys default path will be documents we use on scripts folder so here you can create one folder if you want for each project you can go to that folder documents we use on scripts and create one folder for each project each application that you are going to test that you are going to do scripting and test executions okay right? uh, prithish can you please share back your screen so that you know i can do it on your machine yes so select to you know by default single protocol will be selected observe here by default single protocol will be selected and select web http html correct yeah and now give some name to this let's give some name to the script right so give the name as web tools uh, so the first application that we are going to use is web tools right so give the name as web tools underscore user registration reg just give a user reg registration yeah and give the date if you want december 1st something like that rec1 rec no no rec1 for rec for recording one i'll tell you why we have to you know why should we uh, follow this i'll tell you soon eh? um, yeah first december per perfect and now so you see here right default path will be documents reusion scripts as i mentioned right documents reusion scripts this is the default path now what you do is go to that folder copy the path from here this copy the path from here yeah open a file explorer yes right you can go to documents under quick access you have documents right documents yeah click over there ha uh, vision documents you should have a folder called vision okay um uh, okay it is there in users mm -hmm. go to view once please go to view once uh hidden items select that hidden items here 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 yeah okay yeah go to that path see users 
go uh, see users whatever path it is showing please go to that path documents go to documents type d uh, yeah documents view gen there is no folder called we okay okay got it yeah once you start it will be created sorry guys uh, sorry for the confusion so go there go to load and once yeah and now you know like uh, enter some solution name in the next field enter some solution name use give name as web tools web tools yeah and now click create click create now i think now it will be created go to c now go to c drive once go to that folder once now it should be created the vision folder should be created yes and in here you can see a scripts and there you can see uh that you know web tools dot uh, ltsln means uh, solution it should be load test solution something All right i think it is load test solution hold on not that much important okay you need not bother about that once give me access please can you go to that folder yeah. virtual user test solution right so this file extension is ltsln okay fine and this is a folder that you know this is the script that is created right just now we clicked on create right it this is an um, template basically an empty script that it created just now and you observe right the first time when you click on start recording like uh, create then this vision folder will be created okay now go to load another one so once you once you, you know like once you create a script right you will see the uh, let me explain this this thing so you see the solution name here uh, so pridish gave the solution name as web tools right that's why you are seeing here solution web tools under that this is the first script that we are going to do web tools user registration on this machine this is the first script and so web tools rec1 so this is the name given by him isn't it and observe here you know by default you will have actions and under that you will have three actions v user init are three parts of the script v user init is one thing so observe here what is there v user init return zero so we'll come to this we'll discuss this we'll understand this later but for now remember that there will be three actions by default called as v user init action and v user end right v user for virtual user by the way v user is for virtual user okay and init action and end so we'll discuss what is the purpose of these three sections like we'll discuss that in the coming up sessions first let's understand the ui right and there is a there is one more folder called extra files in that you have globals.h right you have a globals.h a file called globals.h and observe here global variables will be declared here all the global variables will be declared here right and i will explain what is the global variable what is local variable once we start the scripting and you know like here you have something called runtime settings this will be useful when you replay the script at the runtime right these will be applicable only when you replay the script and the next file is parameters file i have shown you yesterday like uh, and the, not not yesterday yesterday i think i covered them it right so last to last session i when i uh, gave demo on loader scripting i you know you you have already seen this parameters file right and there is something called recording report and replay summary in the in this left side tree or solution explorer this window is called as solution explorer please note it down guys okay so those who have habit of running notes right so please note it down solution explorer okay some people will take you know running notes they have that habit of running notes right so if you write it down you know you will not forget easily okay and so going back to the script now how to we and one more thing by default you see some output window at the bottom here you see this output window so output window will show you like when you record the script you know it will show you the <laughs> so it will show you like you know uh, code generation log and recording log i'll i'll explain that later so basically the, just remember that there is some output window at the bottom and there are on the top you have options to record the script this is the option to record the script actually this is the option to record the script okay 
Previously, it used to be a red in red color. The recording button used to be in red color. Now, from 20 to 20, 2020 onwards, then they changed it like this. Guys. Okay. So this is the option to record the step. And let us understand this different, you know, menu options. By, by the way, so if you click on record, okay. So most of the options, you know, we mostly use this record, you know, this one record option or menu item, record menu item and design, design, record and replay and tools, right? These are the mostly used, you know, menu options and integrations, of course, integrations, right? But while scripting, like we will use this, you know, like design, uh, design and uh, record and replay when we are doing scripting. There it is. Now, how to, uh, shall I show you how to record the script or shall we stop, stop here, guys? I will stop it here, guys, for today. I think I already shown you like how to record a script, right? In the previous session, I will stop it here for today.